got another question on the carbonyl compounds topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first okay so we'll make a start so reaction one compound e is reacted with excess potassium dichromate six and sulfuric acid so obviously that's an oxidizing agent we've got two parts of compound e that can be oxidized the primary alcohol part is going to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid because we're in reflux the secondary alcohol part will be oxidized to a ketone so the structure of compound f will look like that it's really important that that stays as a wedge obviously this part of the molecule is trigonal planar so we lose the wedge for this bond here moving on to the reagent for reaction two so the only change is the ketone group has gone back to being um, a secondary alcohol so we need a reducing agent to do that and the reducing agent is NaBH4 next part what would you observe during reaction one so that's the oxidation of the alcohol groups well you'd see an orange to green color change next part there's a couple of ways you can answer this so the reason why reflux is used rather than distillation is to ensure the alcohol is fully oxidized to the carboxylic acid or to prevent the formation of the aldehyde remember when a primary alcohol is oxidized it initially goes to an aldehyde and if you have distillation as your method you would form the aldehyde what type of reaction is taking place in reaction two remember that's i mentioned with the reducing agent nabh4 so it's a reduction reaction or you could give the type of mechanism nucleophilic addition Part B now, a chemical test you could use to detect the presence of a carbonyl group. So you'd add 2,4-DNP, or you could say Brady's reagent there, and you would get an orange precipitate. Part C, so the type of isomerism we'll start with is optical, and that's because we've got two chiral centres in the molecule. So this is the original structure, I've just copied it out again. So I've given all the possible answers you could give for this. So I'll just quickly explain them. So in the first one, I've drawn basically the mirror image of the, the lower chiral center. I've kept that the same. The middle one, I've mirrored the um, top chiral center and kept that lower one the same. And the third option, you can actually mirror both of the chiral centers. So any of those three would be fine for your answer. Moving on to the percentage yield calculation. So the first thing we do is calculate how many moles of E we used. So mass over the MR gave us the MR for E. So 0.0285 moles of E. There's a one to one ratio running through this um, reaction. And so therefore the theoretical moles of G will also be 0.0285. Next thing we do is work out the actual moles of G that's formed. So mass over the MR of G so that's coming out at 0.0181 i've kept the full number in the calculator of course and then to turn it into a percentage yield we do the actual moles produced divided by the theoretical moles times 100 so we get a calculator value of that and to three significant figures 63.5 percent and for the final part compound g being refluxed with concentrated sulfuric acid so just think about the functional groups that we've got right next to each other here. We've got an alcohol group and we've got a carboxylic acid group. So we're going to get an ester. So basically we're going to take out two hydrogens and an oxygen. So I'll go for those there and that will generate an ester group between these two carbons here. So the organic product will look like that and obviously we get a water molecule as well.